Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Genpei by Invaders. This is a one to four player game that takes roughly 40 minutes to play and is for ages eight and up. And in the game Genpei, you are playing as one of the hopeful successors to the throne. The emperor has recently died and has left behind his only heir. However, the heir is very young. And so you are going to try and succeed in, su succeed in the emperor's son and try and become the ruler but in order to do that, you must gather the favor of the houses. There are five separate houses in the game, and each of them are going to require you to drop influence on them in order for you to win. By the time the clan deck is emptied, whoever has the most influence on each of the houses will claim victory over that house, and if you have the most, you win. However, if there's a tie, the tiebreaker is going to go to the emperor's house. Will you gather enough influence from the clans, the ninjas, and claim the throne or will the emperor's son claim the throne if you want to include him to set up the game first take the main board of the game and put it in front of all players then go ahead and place each of the clan influence tokens on the pagoda section of the clan area after that you're then going to go ahead and form the clan deck you're going to take out a certain number of cards based on the number of players and separate them and remove them from the game afterwards shuffle the deck up and create the four factions into one total pile as well as dealing out four of these cards to each player. Additionally, you're going to then have each player choose two cards to keep and two cards to form the ninja deck. Then shuffle those cards together and create the ninja pile right next to the clan deck. Deal out one card for uh, the clan deck in each of the locations on the left hand side of the board. This is where you can recruit or assassinate certain members. You'll have additional cards for additional modes of gameplay and you're going to have currency and emperor tokens that you can set aside as well. After that, you're ready to begin the game. Genpei is basically a fairly straightforward small deck builder slash area control game. What you're going to do is if you have the starting player marker, if you're the last person to become the emperor or however you want to decide who goes first, you're going to take your two cards and you'll play one of them. And when you play one of them, you're then going to move the influence marker on that clan that you played, either left or right, clockwise or counterclockwise. And when you do, you will take the action of the location that you move it to. And there are a multitude of different locations, and they do a bunch of different things. The main one here is going to be the pagoda. This is going to allow you to place your influence tokens that you have onto the certain the specific clan that you place it on. So if I put the blue clan influence marker onto the pagoda, I'd place an influence on the blue one. If I did it for the red same thing same thing then we have assassinations this will allow you to assassinate the specific clan members in the left hand side of the board here and when you assassinate them they'll be removed from the game and you'll take that clan's action whenever you take a clan's action you'll simply move their marker either clockwise or counterclockwise and take the new action and that's how actions are going to basically be come chained in a way you have things like ninja which is going to allow you to draw the top card of the ninja deck then take that clan's action and put that card on the bottom of the deck recruiting allowing you to recruit either of the two cards on the left hand side if there's none left you can't do it and take that clan's action and when you recruit a card you'll take it and you'll put it into your discard pile and you're going to get more gain more cards as the game goes on uh, additionally, you're going to have things like gaining three coins. You're going to be able to use the Tori action, which will give you a, a, an option to use any of the six actions down below, gaining two coins, moving one of the clan markers, and then playing another card from your hand. You'll be able to use the like Emperor's Favor, spending coins to place tokens on this Emperor track and move your, your tokens up, I should say, your influence up on this track here. And of course, it's not only a tiebreaker, but it's also a house in and of itself or clan for influence, you'll be able to gain new influence tokens. So by spending two, you'll be able to gain these guys two a piece. And then you'll also be able to uh, rotate the influence around the board. And finally, you can just straight up spend three in order to place one of your influence on any of the houses. When you choose one of these actions, you can do it multiple times until you have no coins left. And the max amount of coins you can have is six. Other actions include the spy action. This is going to allow you to take a top card from the deck here, the clan deck, and put it into your hand. And then the final action is over here. It looks like a flag. It will allow you to do any of the other actions of the other spaces where the influence markers are currently present at. So if I had markers like this, and I move this marker onto this flag here, I could perform the assassinate action, I could perform the Tory action, or I could perform the recruit action. 
And that's basically the different actions in the game. And all you're doing is playing a card, and then you're going to uh, move the marker, take the action, hopefully get another action, and another action, and another action, until eventually you have no more actions that you can use. You'll pass your turn. When you pass, you're going to basically draw up to two cards. If you have no cards in your deck, you'll shuffle your discard pile into your deck and bam, draw up to two cards and pass the next player. And this will continue going until this deck here runs out, this clan deck. Once this deck runs out and there's an equal number of turns using the ninja cards if you need to, if this deck is empty and there's no cards left to get, then you're going to check to see who has won. When you check to see who has won, you're gonna be flipping over influence in each of the areas adding up the totals for each players, and for each person that has control of that area, meaning they have the most points, they'll gain control of that token. If you have the most tokens at the end of the game, you win. But if there's a tie in any way, the person who is farthest up on this track or who has the most influence in this emperor area is going to break that tie. The only other thing left to talk about is there's some variants in the game, but these tokens here have a number, which is how much influence you'll gain in that specific section, but also a card symbol. And the card symbol is going to be based on the cards in your deck. So if I had a deck like this at the end of the game, and I had a two plus a card symbol for red, I would go through my deck at the end of the game, revealing the different red cards that I have, and I would add that to the number. So two plus two red cards is four influence for this specific location. Um, another thing to note too is at the end of the game, you'll separate your cards secretly in the different faction types. And if you have any of those card symbols on this emperor track here, you can go ahead and select any number of one faction to set aside. So for instance, if I had four orange cards in my, in my deck, basically at the end of the game, I could separate any number of them. So I can go, okay, two and two. Then I can go ahead and set these aside. Whenever I want uh, to reveal for my faction in the orange area, I go, okay, these are my two here. So it's two points if I have a card token there. And then for the emperor, whatever I set aside for the emperor specifically with that one faction, that's how many is gonna count towards my card token in that area. Okay, I've got a two here, so it'll be two in this area here. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. Whoever has the most influence in each of the areas, taking the tokens, has the most tokens at the end of the game, is the winner. There is also a variant too where you can play with the Emperor's Son. You need to do it for a two player game, but it's optional in a three or four player game, which will add in unique different tokens to the game and potentially additional cards. But that's basically how you play the game, Genpai. Well, let's talk about it. So like I said, this is a light deck builder of sorts. You start with only two cards and there's only four different unique cards in the game. What's actually interesting about the cards is the actions that you take with them is going to be based on where the marker is located on this specific area on the faction's board area. So for instance, if I had it on the recruit symbol as opposed to on the pagoda, when I take that blue card and play it, or the dark blue card, this is a light blue I guess, I can either do the Tori action or I can do the ninja action. But if it's on the assassinate action, when I play the blue card, I can do the either pagoda action or I can do the ninja action. So it kind of changes the type of actions you can do based on what was played previously. So how the board was set up before it got to your turn. And each of the factions have their own unique abilities. You have the red one, which is going to allow you to do any of the other abilities from the other factions based on where their token is at. It's really good. You have the spy action. That's going to allow you to, I believe, draw a card from the top of the deck, put it in your hand. And then you're also gonna have the assassinate, which I guess there's on two of them there. And finally, there's the bow and arrow. This one here is going to let you play an extra card from your hand and continue your chain. One little thing I didn't mention is some of the actions on the board here have coin symbols and that's the main way in which you're going to get coins in the game and if you can kind of chain combos while you're doing your combos, gathering your cards, assassinating, uh, gathering these free coins is how you're going to be able to get them to use for your Tory action. Basically your Tory action should hopefully be uh, as free as possible without having to go onto the triple coin space or gathering just straight up coins from the Tory space. You wanna try and get those bonus coins as much as possible, allowing you to place down extra influence for free without ending your turn on one of these guys here. Uh, gathering influence from your pool, cause you only start with three. So if I had four coins, and I wanted to, I only had my three influence that I started with, maybe I could do my Tory action 
I'd spend four, because I could do it more than once, and bam, I'd get my two extra tokens, which is going to give me additional influence that I can put down on the locations, which you may or may not be able to place all of them, even if you have all of them by the time the game ends. So you have to kind of be aware of that. This game can end abruptly. You might think that there's a lot of cards and it's going to take a lot of time, but as the rounds start going and players' turns start swiftly moving along, you'll start seeing that deck reduce quite significantly. Each turn, up to three cards can be removed, and typically one or two are going to go every single turn. And you're going to want to gather the right cards for your deck based on where you're placing influence, because the most uh, influence tiles that you have are typically going to have a card symbol on them. There are a few that are just simply numbers, but for the most part, they're card symbols. So in this instance here, let's go ahead and take all these guys. We have one, two, three, four card symbols, and some of them have bonus influence on them. And then we have a two, a three, and a four influence that you can go ahead and utilize throughout the game. So those cards are only going to be based on the cards that you have in your deck based on where you've placed the token. If you have a bunch of blue cards but have no influence on that blue area, you are not going to be able to utilize those for scoring points with your card symbols on the red area. So you're going to want to kind of construct your deck based on where your tokens are going to be. Another thing to note with this game too is because it can happen that there's a tiebreaker, and as far as I know this is how the rules work, if me and Callie tied by each having two locations, she had the uh, dark blue and orange, and I had the red and light blue, and Alicia had control of this, this area here, meaning she has the most influence, uh, then she'd actually win in the tie. So you have to make sure that you have the Emperor's favor if you think that there's going to be a tie in the game. It's better to have this one one of these than it is to have two of these and somebody else have two of them. This is a straightforward, pretty simple game on its like shell. But you know, okay, you have your two cards, you play one card. You take an action, you do whatever it says on the wheel, it feels like there's not a whole lot of choice. But when you start getting into it and realizing how you want to combo on your turn, that can make a huge significant difference. It is uh, rich with actually not only theme, as to feeling like you want to control each of these different houses by having the right cards in your deck, but also, I want to do this action because it'll let me do this one, and then this one, and that one, and finally I'll finish my turn with either doing something like a Tory action, a Pagoda action, or maybe something like gaining three coins, or um, maybe drawing a card from the top of the deck here. Because if you can, if you can actually recruit twice and then do this spy action, you can get a total of three cards. Uh, using cards like, like areas like the ninja, it's like if you have no other way to combo, you can try and press your luck and flip over one of the, these guys and hope you get a good action that will let you continue your run because you want to have as long of a run as possible on your turn. And that's the most important thing is having a run, getting the cards that you need for the areas you want to control, and by the end of the game having the most influence in the different areas. I, I really like this game. It was quick much quicker than I thought when I first started. Uh, it had a lot of different options and combinations. I could start seeing how the best ways to combo and gather the cards from my deck. Sometimes it would be better to assassinate a card that I do not need if I want that specific action, but I'm not gonna actually use the card uh, when I want to like control that specific area so you can dump these guys and kind of quickly push the game around. If you think you're winning, you can try and push the deck, which make it more likely that you're going to win. And if you're losing, you can actually buy, buy your time. You can start only only drawing a couple cards here or there, use the Tory actions, use, start placing influence early, and then go for the cards later. Uh, it's, it's really nice. It's, it's one of those games, it's kind of like a medium weight style game, and it's unique. It's a deck builder, right? But it doesn't really feel like one until about mid-game when you start actually having a deck. You're probably going to run into about maybe 20 cards in this game max uh, with your deck, and uh, then you're going to drop them all down and see what you did for influence. The ending is very exciting. You don't know how many cards your opponents have and how many you cards, cards you have. Just because your opponents have a lot of cards in their deck doesn't mean that they have the cards needed for the specific locations that they chose because sometimes the deck doesn't give you what you want and you have to kind of gamble on the occasion. It, it works really well. The artwork is beautiful. They did a really great job with the artwork for this game. This is probably my favorite artwork uh, from all of their line that I have reviewed so far. Quality of the game, this is a prototype, but what is here is very nice. It all played very well. I'm excited to see what they do with the product, with the finished version of the game, and I think it would even be kind of cool to have certain things be miniatures, like the markers that you move around the board since we use them so much, having to pick them up like this is more challenging. I'd like to actually see something more of like a steeple or a chapel that I can move around. I don't really care what it is. Maybe it's a pagoda. Um, and that would be 
fairly nice to add, but overall this is high quality. It's got really, really great art, and I was really impressed with gameplay. It plays up to four players, which is nice, and there's a single player variant, and you can always include the uh, Emperor's son if you want, the little kid who's trying to vie for power even though he's young, so he's kind of like, he's got like cohorts that are trying to stay loyal to the Emperor and like help achieve what the Emperor wanted. It reminds me of actually the Game of Thrones, the new one, the, the storyline for that and how like the succession kind of works. And I, this has that feel of succession. Anyway, I think you get the idea of what I think of the game. Let me know what you guys think down below. For, for me personally though, it is an excellent little game. I had a lot of fun with it and it is currently available on Kickstarter. There's a link down below in the description. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review the game Genpai by Invaders. If you're interested in picking the game, there's a link down below, like I said. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe notification button too if you'd like to see more videos. Go ahead and check out the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And of course, don't forget our live streams every Sunday and Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST. Alright guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to controlling the throne without you next time. And you'll calculate your points, and whoever has the most on each area is going to... <laughs>